Okay, this is a brief introduction to medicalization and contested illness. Medicalization in layman's term can be a process where normal life conditions becomes a legit medical problems or normal taken for granted conditions in our daily life becomes a legitimate medical problems. Examples of medicalization can include ADHD. When I was in elementary school in the early 80s, when kids, they lash out or they cannot concentrate in the classroom. Sometimes teachers or other adults' parents just perceive that maybe the kid was just going through a phase. It was considered a normal condition. The kid was just uninterested, lashing out. And until the etiologies of ADHD has been ascertained, now ADHD has become a legitimate medical condition in many countries and people can get treated for ADHD and sometimes they are covered by insurance. Another example where our normal conditions eventually becomes a legit medical problems are alcoholism, hyperactivity, the same thing. In days when I was in school or kindergarten, when kids were hyperactive, teachers perceive them as going through a phase. Or they, they are just more extroverted. And another example associated with the process of medicalization would be eating disorder. Depression, anxiety, and many more mental health issues Alzheimer's or dementia, sexual dysfunction, PMS. Prior to this, people suffer in silence pertaining to issues like maybe importance or sexual dysfunction and PMS. People may go to their private or traditional healers or doctors, especially in less developed countries if these issues bother them a great deal. But now, sexual dysfunction, infertility, PMS, or even menopause is a stage women go through. It's a stage women have to transition into. They were all considered part and parcel of life. And now, people can get treated for all these issues like sexual dysfunction, PMS, menopause, infertility, or issues related to pregnancy and childbirth. In our ancestors' days, maybe women went through those issues when they transitioned from teenage years to young adulthood years. And maybe they consulted other older women in their family or kinship. And now, people can get treated for all kinds of problems and issues related to pregnancy and childbirth. Another common example of medicalization would be dyslexia and sometimes caregiver stress, depending on the culture of that person or that group. And another issue that has been medicalized is postpartum depression in some parts of the world. And we also have something we call the process of demedicalization. 
So, it's a no-brainer, it's a giver. Demedicalization means a process where medical problems becomes normal parts of our life. Famous example of demedicalization would be masturbation, homosexuality, bisexuality, or people with different sexual orientation. So, medical problems becomes normal daily life conditions through the process of demedicalization. So, if you had introduction to sociology or principles of sociology, you will learn something called the social construction of reality. And the social construction of reality is summarized by Berger and Lachman in 1966. According to Berger and Lachman, they consider society as a human product and as an objective reality. And because of that, our perceptions of reality are colored by our upbringing and other life experiences as we were growing up. In other words, our perceptions of reality depends on how we are being raised and what we were raised to believe. For instance, people from different cultures and countries have different perceptions about the Cold War and 9-11. Right. And technically, we cannot really say which opinions are more correct or more accurate and which opinions are wrong. So, that's the essence of the social construction of reality. The social construction of illness is an extension from the social construction of reality. As such, the social construction of illness says that our perception of illness is shaped by the existing social forces as well as the culture and social system. Therefore, even though illness is not merely a biological phenomena that occurs naturally and consequences are independent from any biological effects, people perceive and give different meanings to illnesses and diseases depending on their culture and social backgrounds. When it comes to illness and disease, this perception is going to affect how we enact our own illness and endow it with meaning in the context of our social and personal relationships. The social construction of illness views illness and disease as a social problem that is created by the purposive actions of individuals. This experience is going to affect how we perceive those who are sick. Some view it as a form of deviance, while others, like medical professionals, policy makers, law enforcement personnel, and so on, view it as a form of social control. This explains why the social construction of illness is a synthesis of symbolic interactionism and structuralist slash political economic approaches. Because of that, the meaning of illness or disease remains an underdefined and elusive concept. And the meaning of these concepts can also be multidimensional. This video, which is available on YouTube or Canvas, will tell you how and why different illnesses like Alzheimer's disease, 
postpartum depression, diabetes, and so on and so forth are socially constructed. In other words, the concept of the social construction of illness are explained in this video. The social construction of illness is also called the social construction of disease or the social construction of health. There are two meanings associated with contested illness. Contested illness can be illnesses where their etiologies has not yet been clearly defined or ascertained. And page 420 of this book defines etiology as the manner of causation or a set of causes. Contested illness can also be a set of symptoms that cut across multiple illnesses. And because of that, it's hard to classify these symptoms into one or more legitimate medical conditions. Examples of contested illnesses include IBS, short stature. Short stature can be due to multiple factors. It can be due to genetics. It can be due to sedentary behaviors. It can be due to malnourishment and so on and so forth. And because of that, short stature remains a contested illness to this day. Another example of contested illness would be chronic fatigue. There are multiple causes to chronic fatigue. And a person can have multiple legit medical conditions when that person complains about chronic fatigue. Another example of contested illness would be underweight or delayed menstruation. But sometimes, given enough research or development in the medical field, sometimes a contested illness can become a legitimate medical condition like IBS. And in some cultures, caregiver stress or postpartum depression. I uploaded this video on Canvas or YouTube. And because adult post-bullying syndrome or APBS, their etiologies has yet been ascertained. Even though their symptoms are clear-cut and because of that, APBS remains a contested illness to this day.